Okay. Well, hey, I'm Jeff Connor with Purina Mills, and I'm here at Producers Co-op Country Christmas. And today we've got a speaker from our group, Dr. John LeClerc, that's going to talk about uh, minerals. So uh, I'm going to introduce John and let him go and uh, enjoy the seal. Thanks, John. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, so I'm John LeClerc. I'm a technical consultant for Purina. Um, I live down here in College Station, so I'm, I'm really close to the folks at the Producers Co-op. And today I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite topics, and, and that's, that's going to be mineral nutrition. So before we get started, I think it's imperative that we clarify that mineral is just some component balanced nutritional program. And so uh, even if we've got the best mineral program in the country, if I'm not providing my cow enough energy, enough protein, I'm probably still not going to be satisfied with what my performance objectives are, are reaching uh, those cattle's uh, genetic potential. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. But as it pertains to this particular presentation, we're solely going to focus on mineral, which is the catalyst that really ignites your entire nutritional program. And so I broke a, a kind of our presentation down into three different sections, and they kind of coincide with my three key messages from this particular presentation. So if you don't remember anything else, please take these three messages. So cattle need mineral supplementation. We're going to learn that many of the forages and grasses that your cows are eating are just inherently deficient in the minerals that are essential for profitable production. The second is that the cattle have got to eat the mineral supplementation for it to have value, okay? Just because you put the mineral in the feeder doesn't mean your job's done. If those cows don't eat that mineral, it's not going to have any value. And third is that Purina has a full line of research tested and field proven mineral options. All right. And so as we start talking about minerals, there's at least 14 different macro and micro minerals that are essential for profitable production. Now, I don't think you need to uh, rack your brain around trying to memorize any of these. Just recognize that every time you buy a bag of Purina mineral, it's got the appropriate amount of concentration and balance between each one of these minerals to get your cows to perform at their optimal level. Now, investing in a mineral program is one of the most important investments that we make as a cattle producer uh, because of, by providing a high quality mineral, we generally see improved animal gains, animal health outcomes. We, we generally see better conception rates. And that leads to generally at least a two to one return on investments. And so this is one of the, the key things that we need to really put together a, a good mineral program if we're going to get our cattle to perform at their optimal level. So as we start talking about mineral deficiencies, we kind of break down mineral deficiencies into two different areas. Okay, We have our clinical and our subclinical level. So a clinical is when an animal expresses signs. So if we think about a cow that has grass tetany. All right, so the first moment that she expresses a sign of, of grass tetany is probably going to be when she starts shaking or giving convulsions or muscle spasms. Now, do you think that when she first starts having muscle spasms, that's the first moment that she was deficient in magnesium to cause that grass tetany? No, probably not. She's probably been deficient in, in magnesium for quite some time, maybe several weeks, maybe even a month or more. And, and that's when she was in that subclinical state. Now, that, that's what's really tough about mineral deficiencies. I can walk out in the pasture. My cows may look exactly fine, but they're actually subclinically deficient in many of our minerals. And I think there are thousands, maybe even millions of cows that look healthy, but are, are subclinically deficient in mineral. And you can see in that particular stage of subclinical deficiency, we start to see impaired immunity. We start to see lower growth and fertility records. And so even though your cows look fine, and it's the same with us humans, we could probably walk into a, a group of people and it's pretty tough to say that guy right over there, he's, he's deficient in cobalt. So that guy over there, he's deficient in phosphorus, all right? It, it's, it's about impossible to tell. So your cows may look healthy, but if you got the wrong mineral program out there, if you got no mineral, I promise you, your cattle are at least subclinically deficient and that's where you're gonna see some problems. Now, when we have those types of mineral deficiencies, that leads us over here to what I call the domino effect. We don't have enough mineral out there. We have problems getting our cows bred. Then the calves that we get on the ground, uh, there's, we've got some problems getting them calved. We've got some problems with them from a deficiency in, in terms of immune response. And then that last domino that hits is that we got that last lost profit. And so um, some big issues that we can look at there. And so why are minerals important? Well, because basically every parameter that we're paid on as a cattle producer is going to be dictated by, by minerals. It's going to have uh, minerals are going to be a big part of those cofactors. So whether it be feed intake, fertility, any sort of growth and development parameter that we're going to look at, whether it be 
muscle development, nervous system, fetal development, uh, skin and hair, all those things are using multiple different minerals as cofactors in those particular processes of, of animal production. Now, this next slide, I'm basically I'm trying to highlight that, hey, mineral nutrition is highly complex, all right? So this, this is kind of our ball of yarn. You can see here this kind of ball on the right. And, and on the ball of yarn, we've got um, all the minerals listed on the outside. So we've got S is sulfur and uh, Zn would be zinc and Mg is mag uh, magnesium and whatnot. And so we, the thing about minerals are is they compete against each other. All right. So once we, the cow eats, a, you know, these minerals, they're going to compete against each other for digestion and absorption. So I talked earlier about grass technique. So grass technique is the the metabolic disorder when cows aren't getting enough magnesium in their blood. Magnesium again is MG. And so what if I told you that most time we have grass technique problems, it's in the spring, we got cows out of lush green growing grass, and we have problems with magnesium absorption. What if I told you that those cows, well, there's enough magnesium in the grass for that cow to meet her magnesium requirements. But the problem is, and you can see anytime there's a line between two of these nutrients, so like magnesium is related down here to K, which is potassium. And so that grass, even though it's got enough magnesium, it's got elevated levels of potassium. And that potassium is going to block the magnesium from being absorbed because they're competing against each other. And that cow is lactating. And, and magnesium is also related over here to CA, which would be calcium. And so that cow is going to prioritize calcium absorption because she needs it to make milk. And so even though there's enough magnesium in that grass, I can still get grass heading because the balance of minerals is out of whack because I've had too much potassium and that cow wants calcium. And so we'll feed a high mag mineral. It's got an elevated level of magnesium to try to balance it out. So uh, again, I don't expect anybody to memorize this. I don't expect anybody to know this, but the only reason I highlight this one example is because I'm trying to showcase the fact that mineral nutrition is highly complex, all right? And many times the balance of minerals is more important than one particular concentration. Now. Since mineral nutrition is going to be one of the most important investments that you make as a cattle producer, please invest and trust your product to a company that understands all these complicated interactions. I can't tell you how many times I look at some of our competitors, and I look at their product, and I look at the bag, and I'm like, man, these guys have no idea about all these different interactions because their balance of minerals is off. And, and this, this mineral, a lot of those are just, they're not going to get the job done. Now, the next thing I want to draw your attention to that showcases why it's important to invest in a, in a great mineral program is because, you know, the grass is always changing. Keep in mind, mineral content is not the same as mineral availability. Just because your grass may have half a percent of phosphorus, that doesn't mean your cow can use all that phosphorus, all right? The, the bioavailability of that phosphorus may be a little bit lower than that, all right? Not only is the content uh, and availability different, but it's constantly changing throughout the year. It makes sense that when we turn cows out on less green grown grass, there's more protein in it than what it's gonna be when it's a dormant grass that's mature. All right, now also keep in mind that your cows are no different than me and you. When you turn them out on a pasture, there are hundreds of different species of grasses out there represented. And so each cow has got you know, their palate, they've got what they like a little bit better. So each cow is probably gonna go hunt and seek out that species of grass they like. Well, all of them are eating different types of grasses or a little different distribution of grass, all right? So we keep that in mind. Every cow is probably getting a little different mineral profile. It's almost impossible to say each cow is getting this much mineral from the grass. So that's why it's important that we provide a supplement to ensure that there's no shortfalls and we get those cows exactly what they need. As we talked about, our grass is going to change throughout the year. That change in forage quality is definitely going to dictate some differences in the availability and the content of, of the mineral that we have there. Now, there are some commonalities that I, I like to look at. The first I look at is zinc. Pretty much no matter what type of grass you're putting out there, we're not going to get enough zinc out of that grass. We've got to provide that with the supplement. Copper is another one that's really important to keep in mind. You can see here with our lagoon grasses, if we've got those cattle out on like alfalfa, yes, there's enough copper, but everything else, we're not meeting our requirement. For us down here in Texas, we're probably okay with selenium. But, but a big one that I also like to look at is phosphorus. So as you can see here, our phosphorus requirements are right about 0.29. And there's only about two months out of the year that we'll, we'll get enough phosphorus in our grass to meet our catalyst requirement. And phosphorus is a very, very important mineral. See, phosphorus is referred to as the master mineral. And the reason it's called the master mineral is because it's the precursor to energy. Okay, so phosphorus binds together with glucose. And glucose is just blood sugar. 
to create ATP. And ATP is the fuel source that the cells in my body and your cow's body uses to, to work, all right? So let's put it this way. If your cow's gonna stand up, she needs fossils because she's got, she needs ATP to stand up. For her to walk, for her to breathe, for her to respirate, for her to drink water, to graze, she needs phosphorus. Phosphorus is a cofactor in every process that requires energy in the body. And so as you can imagine, if we do not provide phosphorus, we're gonna see some pretty staggering results. So this is a study, it's a pretty classical study that was conducted at the King Ranch. In the King Ranch, they looked at four years of four subsequent calf crops. They gave half their cows a phosphorus mineral and half their cows didn't get any phosphorus mineral, okay? Now the cows that didn't get a phosphorus mineral, they weaned off about 65% of their calf crops. So that means they had a pretty low calving rate. Uh, and those calves weighed 490 pounds. The cows that did receive a phosphorus mineral, they had a 90% weaning weight or weaning rate. So that means they, their conception rates are really good. And their calves they weaned off weighed 540 pounds. All right. So we had a lot more calves and they weighed 50 pounds more per calf if we fed phosphorus, right? So that equates to an additional 53% of beef or, or cattle that you could sell in weaning. All right, so that's a pretty staggering result. And you might be asking, well, what, 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 can, what kind of effect can that have on my bottom line? So if we take a look at what our prices are today for cattle, and we also consider what, what the cost is to keep a year-round high-quality mineral product out there, we can generate an additional $205 per cow exposed to a bull by providing a high-quality mineral product. All right, those are pretty staggering results. And if you paid attention at all, 2020 has been a tough year for us in the cattle business. When you start thinking about making an additional 200 bucks a cow, this is a product you can't afford not to invest in if you want to stay solvent in this particular industry. Now, a more recent study that was conducted by the University of Missouri may clarify why we saw such staggering results in terms of that, that King Ranch study. And see, it turns out that not only does your cow need mineral and phosphorus, but the bugs that populate her rumen need phosphorus as well. So the bugs, they're the ones that do all the dirty work. The bugs are the microbes. Uh, they're the ones that, that digest or ferment the grass, the hay, the stuff you and I can't eat that your cow can digest. Uh, they're the ones that break all that stuff down. Well, see, it turns out when we give the bugs mineral, they start doing their job digesting in a more efficient rate. So you can see that by feeding a mineral relative to salt, those cows were digesting 3% more protein. They're digesting 6% more fiber. And they're also digesting 7% more total energy. And so for me, it makes sense that if my cows are digesting a higher percentage of the grass that they eat, that they're going to stay in better body condition. And as a consequence, they're going to have better breeding rates. They're going to be more reproductively efficient. Those cows are in better body condition. They're going to wean off bigger calves. Those calves are going to be stronger and have a better immune response. And so all this stuff starts to make sense. If we're doing a better job of digesting the grass that you eat because the mineral that we're providing, all of a sudden we can be more profitable in the cattle business. Now, before we move on, one thing I want to highlight about phosphorus is, is that not all sources of phosphorus are the same. Lots of times I'll hear a customer call me and say, hey, Dr. DeClerc, I've got this product over here. It's 7.5% phosphorus, the competitor, and your product's 7.5% phosphorus, and theirs is cheaper. And then I'll go look at the tag and I'll say, well, yeah, it's 7.5% it's, it's, it's phosphorus, but they're using one of these rock sulfates, which you can see down here at the bottom of this particular table. And only about 35 or 50 percent of that can even be used by the cow. So it's seven and a half percent phosphorus, but they're really only going to digest maybe three, you know, to three and a half percent of it. Um, where we're using phosphorus, like monocal phosphate, where it's 100 percent bioavailable. Okay. So I'll tell you this right now: if you're going to evaluate Farina on the price on the the tag on the upfront cost, we're never going to be the cheapest product that you're going to get. But if you evaluate Farina on the cost of the performance that your cattle generates the weaning rates that you're going to have, the, the, the immunity of your cattle, the conception of your cows. I promise you, we are the best bet in town, all right? And, and because we don't cut corners, we only use the highest quality uh, ingredients to ensure that your cattle perform at the optimal level. Now, I could spend all day uh, talking about mineral and, and all the problems that are going to happen if you don't, um, you know, invest in a high-quality mineral product, but I don't think anybody wants to listen to that. So I'll just summarize. There are a myriad of things that are going to happen if we don't provide mineral to our cows. But a lot of this is going to be we're just going to have small and weak calves. We're going to have problems with our growth rates. And then obviously from a conception standpoint, it's going to be awfully tough to get your cows bred at the rate that we can be profitable if we're not providing a high-quality mineral product. All right? So that leads me into our second bulleted point. 
And that's that we've got to, the mineral that we're providing has got to be consumed by the cows to have value. We just can't put it in the feeder and then our job's done. The cow's got to eat it, okay? If you're like me, you probably wish just by buying vegetables you could be healthy. Or maybe if I just put the vegetables on my plate, I would feel better. But unfortunately, I got to eat those vegetables if I'm going to be healthy. And your cows have got to eat the mineral that we're providing if they're going to bolster their performance to the rate that we want them to if we're going to get our job done, okay? So at Farina, the key is making sure that we have a, 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 you know, a consistent targeted intake, all right? We can have the best mineral product in the world, but if the cows aren't going to eat it, it's not going to get the job done. And so I don't know if any of you have ever tasted mineral before, um, but it, it's not the most palatable to the tongue. You can get off kind of a little bit of a metallic taste. And so getting cows to eat mineral on a free choice basis is a lot easier said than done. But we've done extensive research on, on palatability at our research center up at, uh, outside of St. Louis, Missouri, at Gray Summit, Missouri, and, and, and to try to find the formulas that are going to be uh, the most inducive or conducive to getting cows to eat at their targeted rate. And, and so what we try to do at Farina is we try to hold ourselves accountable. And so what we're trying to do is we, we constantly go out with customer demonstrations. So that's ranchers just like yourself from all over the country, and they're going to track to see what our mineral consumption is. So we've got about 1,000 farms and ranchers from all over the U.S., and that represents about 145,000 head of cows. And I'm very proud to say that our winning rain formula is formulated for four-ounce consumption, and the average consumption is 4.01 ounces, almost a direct bullseye where we want to be at. Now, this is a pillar of our program of Perina. Because if we're going to keep mineral in the proper balance, we need them to eat right about their target. If they're eating 10 ounces, my mineral program's out of balance. If they're eating one ounce, again, my mineral's out of balance. So we got to get them to be right around that four ounce consumption if we're going to keep that mineral program working at the optimal level. Now, there's several factors that are going to influence consumption of mineral. First is going to be salt and phosphorus. So they can sense when they're low on those things. So if you never put out mineral before, Sometimes they'll, they'll eat a ton of it where at the very beginning because they've got a phosphorus deficiency that they're trying to address. Um, you know, palatability is going to be another one. The next thing we look at is feeder location. Uh, you can see up here, step number one, we got the feeder right next to water. So if your cows are under consuming mineral, move that feeder next to water and that should help incentivize them to eat a little bit more. And it's almost like if you've ever been to like a Mexican restaurant before and uh, you're sitting there and they throw the bag of chips down in front of you, the basket of chips. And you're really not that hungry, but before you know it, you've eaten through the whole basket uh, just because you're bored and you're there. Well, your cows the same way. You put that mineral next to water, next to where they're hanging out at, they're going to definitely consume more of it. If you got cows that are maybe consuming a little over their target, do like step three down here at the bottom and move that mineral feeder away from the water, and that, that'll certainly kind of curtail their mineral consumption. All right. Now, if you've got consumption problems, the thing I would recommend you do is put out a mineral tub. All right, so a mineral tub is certainly a good way to make sure that we have consistent intake. The molasses taste of that mineral tub is going to incentivize those cattle to eat. Um, it's really easy to go ahead and throw a tire around the outside of that tub to keep cattle from knocking it over or pushing it around too much. Down here in South Texas, uh, we, we get we get the point where it's pretty hot. And so you get a couple of those 110 days, and if that tub's out in the middle of the sun, uh, sometimes if, if you get that tipped over, some of that molasses can run out. So I like going ahead and putting the tire around the outside of there make sure that you don't lose any more of that molasses than you have to. And so if we look at our customer demonstrations again from out in the field trials, so we've got about 35,000 head of cattle represented. Our tubs are formulated for six ounce consumption and our average consumption drive at 5.6 ounces. So we're very proud uh, of where we are that way as well. All right, so that leads me to our third and final bullet point, And that is that Farina has a full line of research tested and field proven mineral options. No matter what your circumstance, no matter what your production goals, no matter what your breeding program, we have your mineral. We have hundreds of different minerals to use in, in both our loose and our tub forms, and, and they are put together specifically for your particular program, all right? It, it's like basically having a custom-built mineral that is perfect for your operation, uh, but it's also backed up with our extra year of almost 100 years of Karina research and our field technical expertise to ensure that you're going to have the proper consumption of your mineral in the proper nutrition in that product, all right? So some things I like to look at when I'm trying to figure out which mineral is best for your operation. The first I like to look at is the durability of the weather resistance of the product. Because lots of times you can, if you've got a mineral that blows away in the wind, you've got a mineral that, that uh, spoils after getting rained on, 
that's not any good for anybody, right? And so I would tell people the most expensive bag of mineral you're ever going to buy is a bag that doesn't work. So if your bag of mineral gets a little wet, uh, you know, whether it be from rain or whether it be because of, um, you know, cattle, their saliva, they kind of drool on there a little bit, and you get some of that stuff to clump up and it goes bad, goes rancid on you, that's a pretty expensive bag of mineral because your cows aren't getting anything out of it. I don't care if you get 10 bucks for it. That's an expensive bag of mineral. If you got a mineral that turns into concrete, like the, the guys over here on my right does, you can see it kind of bricks up. Uh, again, that's a pretty expensive bag of mineral. Uh, I don't care how cheap it was when you paid for it. Your cows didn't get any use out of it. It's, it's a bad bag. It kind of reminds me, when I was an undergrad down here at AM, I had a flat tire once. I was a broke college kid, and I went to the tire shop, and I told the guy, hey, just give me the, the cheapest tire you got. So he gave me a tire. I paid 90 bucks for it. I think I drove 2,000 miles and that tire blew out and I had to buy another one. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, that's the most expensive tire I've ever bought in my life. Because if I'd have paid 150 bucks, I probably could have made it 40,000 miles. But instead, I went the, the, the cheap road, thought I was saving some money, gave, uh, you know, $90 for a tire to last me 2,000 miles. So don't, do, don't make my mistake. Invest in a high-quality product because the most expensive bag you're ever going to buy is a bag that doesn't work, all right? And so we've got our patented storm formula at, at Perina. It's got the best in class weather resistant. Now, this is something that I think is really, really unique because this product will resist water. It's not going to spoil in the presence of water, but it's still, uh, but still able to be bioavailable and digested by, by that cow. Now, this is one of those needles that's a lot easier said than done that we threaded. Okay, we thread the needle on this particular formula. It's years of research to put this product together to where it's, it's strong enough that it can resist water, but it's still not so strong that it can be digested by the cow. And it's one of the exclusives that we have at Perina that I think really sets us apart from our competition. All right, the next thing I like to look at is that we talked about bioavailability a little bit earlier. Not all minerals are formulated the same, all right? And so my favorite mineral products are the ones that control or contain uh, Zinfro's trace mineral packages, okay? So that'd be either a bale of four or propat. All right, and the great thing about Zinpro is they share our love of research because they, they want to make sure that their product works. So their product has been verified by more third-party or more university research studies than any other mineral supplier in the country. All right, and the, the, another industry exclusive that we have at Karina is that every time we provide a Zinpro product in our product, it is at the full research recommended and proven rate. All right. Uh, the full seven grams that it's recommended at, okay? A lot of our competitors, the way they'll kind of do it, we call it tag dressing, all right? Avail4 has been proven to work at seven grams. They want to say they've got Avail4 in their product, so they'll, they'll put it in, but maybe they only use two or three grams, all right? So less than what it's been proven to work at, all right? And so they do that tag dressing. That's the way that they want to sell the product, say, hey, yeah, we got Avail4 in here, but it's really not at the full recommended rate. And so that's something that we make sure every one of our products we got available for ProPath, it's at the full recommended rate. And so some of the research that, that Avail4 and, and Zinpro put together, you can see that they've reduced calving intervals, so the cows are going to breed back sooner. That's a University of Florida research. Uh, there's some Arkansas, University of Arkansas research, where they found heifers fed Avail4 had improved pregnancy rates and calving rates. Uh, a research study that just came out this summer that I found really fascinating from South Dakota State is available for, found a better uh, embryonic survival rate. I myself believe that in early embryonic death is something that's really a problem in the cattle industry. And, and so with by food and available for, we can reduce that early embryonic death by 9%, uh, which what South Dakota State found compared to agriculture. Now, the next thing we've also learned is from the bulls is that by feeding Zinpro trace minerals, we're improving the fertility of that. Sometimes maybe them cows are breeding out uh, better because those bulls are eating that mineral too. And, and we've seen a lot of research that shows that the, uh, the morphology and the motility of semen is going to be improved by feeding the Zinpro. And then the soundness of those bulls are going to be uh, you know, improved as well because of some of that copper and zinc are going to help, help with hoof health and joint quality as well. And so the very last thing that I like to do when I'm making a consideration on on a recommendation for each particular operation and on what type of mineral spew they need to is, is trying to control horn flies. And, and so horn flies is, is, is a very big problem down here in our part of the world. We, we've got flies at least 10 months out of the year, sometimes 12 months out of the year, depending on when we get across. And usually flies are going to cost the industry about a billion dollars every year. Now that may seem like just a big crazy number and there's no way that that's going to happen. But when you consider that Flies in, in pastures that don't have any fly control, 
usually about a thousand flies per cow. Each one of those flies is going to take 20 to 30 blood meals every day, and they're going to live for anywhere between two to four weeks. You start thinking about how much blood they're taking out of your cows. It's probably pretty easy to think, okay, those cows are running low on blood. They've got to regenerate that blood. So it's going to be tougher for them to put that into, you know, that's energy they're taking, diverting away that they could use for milk. That's energy they could be using to go out there and eat grass and, and stay in better shape and breed back. So it's probably pretty easy. You start thinking about those type of numbers, that, that the difference in that $40 loss per head. And so I would recommend you go ahead and feed a, an IGR mineral, uh, one of our minerals with alphacid. Now I'll tell you, this is not a cure-all. We're not going to put that fly control mineral out there and it's going to eliminate bugs completely. A lot of this is going to come, it's part of a fly control program. We still got to make sure that we get rid of big manure piles where those are kind of breeding grounds for flies, uh, where they can lay some eggs. We want to make sure we get rid of old rotting out hay and things like that to kind of compost. That's kind of some breeding ground for flies as well. But by feeding that IGR mineral, we take away them laying eggs or when they lay eggs in cow manure, it's going to keep those uh, eggs from ever maturing up and into being a mature fly. So we definitely can use this as one component of a, of a fly control program and help mitigate some of the performance losses that you have here. And the last slide I'm going to leave you with, this is a, a performance, or this is a, a cost, um, I guess, a, a return um, that was generated by cattle facts, all right? And so what cattle facts did was they looked at the profitability on a per cow basis over the last 40 years, from 1980 to 2020, okay? You see the guys in the yellow bar there, that's the average cattle cow producer, cow cow producer in the U.S. The green line is the high-end guys, the, the really, really elite guys, and then the red line down there are the bottom-end guys, okay? So if we look at the bottom, I summarized this. The high-end producers, they made money 38 out of 40 years. The low-end producers, they made money 17 out of 40 years. Now, what Cattle Facts did was they, they looked at the factors that they thought delineated the high-end guys from the average guys. And you see that gray box up there that shows what factors those were. First thing they said was reproductive efficiency. Well, we've been talking all morning about how mineral is a precursor for reproductive efficiency. Second factor they found was animal health. Well, again, uh, you know, animal health is going to be predicated highly on the mineral status of those particular cattle. Third factor they found was nutrition, right? Again, mineral. And then the fourth factor they found was genetics. But I think it's interesting that mineral plays a role and three of the four factors that cattle facts said dictated whether a producer was a, was a top-end producer compared to, to an average producer. So, you know, the cattle business can be pretty tough. And, and obviously 2020 has not been the best year for cow calf producers. But when you consider the return on investment that you can make, and, the, the, and if you really are serious about getting your cattle to maximize their genetic potential, invest in a high-quality mineral product is definitely what you need to do. All right? So no matter what your program is, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what your production goal, we've got a product that'll work for you at Perini, all right? So it can be easy, just one, two, three. Cattle need mineral. Cattle's got to eat the mineral for it to have value. And no matter what your circumstance, Perina has a mineral that'll work for you. All right, so that's my last slide here. I don't know if we got any questions online or, or anything like that, but uh, nothing else. I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for your time. Please go ahead and get a hold of myself or the folks here at Producers. We would love to help you out and, and chat more about our mineral options and um, or Jeff Connor as well. And thanks again for your time.